Well, uh, welcome back. Um, so if you've been, uh, if you've seen any of the previous video videos, um, we basically started with uh, the quadratic equation um, in order to motivate how to use perturbation series to solve e solve equations. Um, and again, we started off with uh, a Taylor series like expansion, and then introduced what is called a regular perturbation series. Um, but uh, I, I think we must. Uh, I think I, I should just clarify here a little bit that a perturbation series in and by itself is a far more general than just uh, just a just a Taylor series. It's 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 um, uh, in the sense that even for regular perturbation series, you might have expansions which have fractional powers in the small parameter, and then there is singular perturbation where you can have negative powers. So, uh, but th that was like a starting point where we start with. Uh, a simple equation do a Taylor series expansion and see that a perturbation series expansion agrees in in the case that a Taylor series exists the perturbation series expansion uh, in that case agreed with the Taylor series expansion um, now um, again going back to uh, the previous videos uh, we, we spoke about some things like uh, when we were looking at the quadratic equation we compared two of the terms and said that the order of magnitude of one of two of the terms are similar whereas the term containing the small parameter epsilon is much much smaller than the other one um, and then there was uh, this idea that when we have a Taylor series like expansion, we most in, in most cases when we have to work with these infinite series, we, we truncate the series to a certain polynomial of a certain degree. And then for the rest of the terms, we were writing dot dot dots. Um, now, so uh, so uh, in this sh sort of short video, uh, um, let's just establish some notations that are commonly used to uh, to, for instance. Uh, when we truncate a certain series of certain number of terms, uh, there is a certain notation used, which is called the big O notation. And then, uh, what do we actually mean by the order of a number or order of magnitude of a number, which is where we compare terms and ignore one term with with the other. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit about about these ideas. Um, so, the first idea is that of an order of magnitude of a number. Uh, so, this is a number, like a numerical value. So, let's say. Um, so let's say you have some number x uh, given a number x given a number x you want to establish what is the order of magnitude of this number um, so a rule of thumb is that um, the order of magnitude of this number is uh, so let's say order of magnitude order of magnitude of x is 10 to the power of n where n is an integer if modulus of x is less than equal to 3 times 10 to the power of n and greater than 3 times 10 to the power of n minus 1. Right. So we need to find out an n such that we can write modulus of x between these two bounds. So let's try a couple of examples. So let's, so let's say um, x is 2. If x is 2, then we can write 2 as less than or equal to, we know 2 is less than 3, so it's 3 times 10 to the power of 0. And it's greater than um, 3 times 10 to the power of 0 minus 1, which is 0.3 so we know that 2 lies between 3 and 0.3 and so if we have to um, if, if we if we need to quantify the order of magnitude of the number 2 we can say its order of magnitude is order of magnitude of the number 2 is 10 to the power of 0 which is 1 so if we encounter the number 2 we could say that okay it's its order of magnitude is 1 um, um, maybe we can try another example uh, let's say we have We have the number 50. Okay, uh, then we'll say that 50 is less than equal to 3 times 10 square, which is 300, and is greater than 3 times 10 to the power of 2 minus 130. And so we can say that the order of magnitude of 50 is uh, here we've used n is 2, so the order of magnitude is 100. 
right? So this is a general idea that's typically used to quantify the order of magnitude of a number. Um, now there's another notation which is which is where again uh, we, we we normally say that it's the order of something order of a function in this case, uh, and this notation is called the big O notation, and O here stands for order of a function. This is for a number, whereas this is for a function. Um, now, um, um, actually, the, the 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 notation big O notation is uh, sometimes uh, a German mathematician uh, Edmund Landau is credited with coming up with the, with the big O notation, uh, and he worked a lot. I'll try and put a link uh, giving some information about him. Uh, so he worked a lot on number theory and uh, complex analysis, and is uh, credited with this uh, coming up with this notation. So the idea here is. Um, that uh, there's a formal definition for the big O. So let's just state that. So let's say you have a function uh, fx. So a function fx is said to have, is said to be big O of another function gx if, um, if uh, modulus of fx is less than or equal to some constant m times modulus of gx in the limit x approaches some quantity x naught. So, so the idea here is that the modulus of function fx is bounded by the modulus of another function gx by some positive constant. You can all, that the idea is that you can find some positive number capital M such that uh, the modulus of modulus of fx is always less than m times modulus of gx as you approach some particular value x that you're interested in. So for instance, typically for us, x naught could be either zero or infinity. Uh, and again, the idea here is that given a more complicated looking function, you can approximate it by a simpler function and get its bound. Um, so, uh, so, so, so as an example, when we spoke about a Taylor series, a power series like expansion, how do we use the big O notation there? So let's, let's think of a simple, uh, Taylor series expansion. Let's say you have a function f of x, which is one divided by one minus x. Uh, now this, where modulus of x is less than one, and you want to expand this function around x equals zero. So x is a small number, close to zero. And we know from geometric series expansion. And again, if you if you if you want to review this, we'll do another video series covering power series expansion and Taylor series. But but the expansion for this function is of the form one plus x plus x squared. It's it's particularly simple. That's why uh, it's it's an easy example to start with. Um, and and x cube and up till x to the power of n. X to the power of n and it goes goes all the way to infinity. Now uh, let's say we were to make a polynomial expansion approximation to this series. So let's say we were to write this as uh, approximately 1 plus x plus x squared plus we ignore all the higher order terms and we can write that as big O x cube. So of course this is an expansion in the limit that x goes to 0. So, um, so this is in the limit yeah, so this is an expansion in the limit that x goes to zero. Maybe we can write it here. So the limit, this is in the limit that x is small, or more precisely, modulus of x is less than one. So instead of writing dot dot dots, we can write a polynomial one plus x plus x squared plus big O x cube uh, is a representation of the function one divided by one minus x. Now, um, how is this? How is it that uh, this? This is true. For instance, y is that all the higher order terms can be represented as big O times x cube. Uh, that's because um, if you um, look at, uh, let's get rid of this. Um, if you look at the terms that we're ignoring, they are of the form x cube plus x4 and xn and so on. And again, uh, as, as, as we said, that this is in the limit that x goes to zero. So if you look at the modulus of this quantity, uh, we can use the triangle inequality and say that, well, this is less than some um, x cube plus x4 and so on, right? Now, all these numbers, x, now in the limit that x is going to zero, modulus of x4 will be less than modulus of x cube. 
Similarly, modulus of x5 will be less than modulus of x cube. And so if you truncate this to, let's say, if, if, if the series, initially you were expanding the series up to n terms, then you would say that this modulus is less than um, x4 plus modulus xn. And if you replace all of them by x cube, you will find that there's some constant or the number of terms that you have there, some constant times mod of x cube. So this entire series is can be bounded by a curve x cube times some constant because all these terms are actually much smaller or actually as you go higher and higher and higher, higher and higher in n the terms become much smaller than become smaller and smaller than x cube and so all the error that we have introduced uh, so what is the error um, the error in approximating the function is uh, we were talking about this function minus 1 plus x plus x square so we approximated this function with a polynomial of second degree um, and the terms that we are ignored are of this form. This minus this is actually x cube plus x cube plus xn and we, all we are saying is this is bounded by a curve of the form x cube. So this is order x cube. Right? So this is, uh, this is a, the basic idea behind using the big O notation. Um, Another way of saying uh, the big O notation, talking about the big O notation, is that um, modulus of fx divided by gx, or rather this quantity, is bounded. In other words, there is an m which is not infinity, it's a, it's a positive constant m, not infinity, such that modulus of fx by gx is bounded by the number m. Um, now, there is a very um, interesting way with which we can think of um, how these two concepts are, slight, are somewhat different, but um, uh, let's just look at another example. Let's say you talk about um, a function, let's say you talk about a function fx, which is, so this is an example, another example, which is actually big O1, right? Now, what does this mean? This means if we, if we apply the definition that modulus of fx divided by 1 is bounded, is less than some constant m. And what this means is that fx is bounded. The function itself is bounded in the region that we are considering. Now, this capital M um, can be used to quantify the order of magnitude of the function in that region. So in other words, this m now is a number, right? This is a positive number. So, so now we can, if, if we have to, if, if somebody asks us, okay, given a function in a certain region, what is its order of magnitude? First, we have to figure out that, first we have to say that, okay, the function is bounded in that region. Uh, so it is big O1, uh, so it's bounded. And given that it's bounded, there is an upper bound capital M. And if we have to quantify the order of magnitude of the function in that region, then that capital M, we have to plug into this definition and see what is the order of magnitude of the number m that bounds the function in that region. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully uh, this is um, this could be of some use, and uh, and, and let's sort of continue with uh, talking about perturbation uh, series in the next video. So uh, see you there. Thanks.